and weighs between 3 to more than 6 kilograms. A surprising fact is that the female golden eagles are bigger and heavier than the males. With 320 kilometers per hour, it, the golden eagle is the second fastest bird in the world during nose dive. Another special thing about the golden eagle is that its eyes are very good. This is an important factor for finding food. They can see a moving hair at distance from one kilometer. As you can imagine, this kind of bird is really made for hunting. They mainly eat ground living animals. They eat mainly ground living birds and mammals and marmots, foxes and hares are their most common food. In the 19th century, there were no more beavers in Switzerland because they were all exterminated. So in 1956, they brought back some beavers to Switzerland, and today about 1,600 of them live again in Switzerland. A beaver can measure up to 1 meter, and they weigh, weigh between 20 to 30 kilograms. They live in the water near the shore, and each family builds its own beaver stem, which looks like this. <coughs> the reason why they do that is that they want to pump flowing water until it becomes like a little lake. Deep water doesn't get too cold during winter, and they are better protected from predators. To build a beaver stem, they have to fall trees. This is only possible thanks to very strong teeth, which contain iron. The iron makes them look orange. Beaver's food just consists of vegetarian things like plants, bugs, leaves or bark. They are good swimmers and can stay, and can stay up to 15 minutes underwater. Because of their paddle-shaped tails, they can swim faster and they also need it to slap the water as an alarm or signal when a predator is approaching. <coughs> the ibex is a type of wild goat that lives in the European Alps. The ibex was once exterminated in most parts of Switzerland because people thought that its flesh and horn had medical use. As of the 19th century, the ibex was successfully reintroduced to the parts of Switzerland where they had been exterminated. The ibex is brown, greyish fur and has long curved horns. You can tell the difference between the males and females by the shape of their horns, as you can see in the middle top picture. Um, their horns grow continuously all their life, and you can see how old the animal is based on the animal wings on their horns. They can weigh up to 90 kilograms, but that doesn't stop them from being extremely good climbers. They have an excellent sense of balance and are very short footed as they walk and jump on the, rock, on the rocky surface. The ibex is separated but this the ibex is separated in two types of herds. First the female herd, which is accompanied by the young, in which the lead female has the most significant role. And then the male herds, in which the importance of an individual is determined by the length of their horns. They feed on alpine herds, herbs, and grasses, fruits, and bushes. The chamois is very similar to the ibex. They are, also, they are also extremely good climbers, and their horns grow all their life. It's harder to di differentiate between male and female chamois, though, because, because their horns are very similar. They have brown, black, and light fur. And their horns are quite straight but then hooked at the end. They live in the mountains, its forests and cliffs, and eat grasses, herbs, needles, and bark. The herds are also based on male and female. The female herd also looks after the young, but the male live on their own and independently of each other. Foxes have red, brownish, and white fur. They have a long bushy tail and are quite small and only reach the maximum height of half a meter. Their triangular ears help them hear their prey. The fox eats rodents, rabbits, worms, and squirrels. They catch the animal as it is shown in the picture. 
temperature top right by jumping in the air and diving down and pouncing on the end. Foxes live in dens under the ground or trees. The pups stay in there until they are old enough to leave the den. The foxes live in small groups consisting of families in which there is the pup on and the pups. They only live approximately two to five years and reproduce every year in spring. That was our presentation on the animals. <laughs>
normal milk chocolate, but there are hundreds of other flavors. Some are dark and others contain nuts or berries or even cornflakes. You can also visit the factories and taste a lot of this chocolate. And you might have heard of Flint or Gaye. These are very famous brands. And yeah. One dessert which contains chocolate is mousse au chocolat. And I don't know exactly if it's a typical Swiss dessert, but you can find it everywhere in the restaurants. So. And obviously, the mousse au chocolat served in Switzerland is the best. <laughs> yeah. And another dessert we like <laughs> is chocolate and fondue combined. So instead of cheese, you use chocolate and you can dip it dip in fresh foods like strawberries, bananas, apples. Whatever. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so, like almost everything in Switzerland, the everyday meal of the common Swiss person is defined by time. So, we eat it um, normally at the normal person has its breakfast at 6 o'clock, then a little snack at 9. Sometimes. <laughs> then at 12 is lunch, maybe a little snack at 4 o'clock, and then dinner is at 6 p.m. A normal breakfast, I mean, it can also be cereals, but this is very typical. It's called tukka. Um, it's sort of a sweet bread, it's rather soft. It's not very, I mean, it's difficult, but our usual bread is a bit more crusty. Um, but it's very delicious, you should definitely try it. Um, and we normally just eat it. Hi, this is Happy, please put us off. This is Happy, please put us off. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> so we usually eat it with butter and jam. Um, a typical lunch is very rich um, because it's called alpine macaron. So it's pasta with potatoes, of course, <laughs> and cheese and onions. And we eat it with uh, apple sauce. Apple sauce. So, yeah. <coughs> yeah, so it's salty and sweet mixed together, but it's, it's very good. I'll definitely try it. Um, but it's very rich and it's not spicy at all. I mean, even our spicy food won't be spicy. <laughs> but it's very rich. <laughs> it's heavy, but yeah, it's good. Um, this is sort of the typical farmer dinner. <laughs> it's just bread cheese and meat. Um, we usually eat a bit lighter um, for dinner than for lunch. And, um, but it's, it's very good because our bread is good, our cheese is good, our meat is good. <laughs> um, and this is a bit usually. We eat it at, we, we can eat it at for um, lunch, dinner, even breakfast because it's, it's sweet. It's uh, with oatmeal and some yogurt and nuts and fruits. Um, yeah, it's very typical and I like it. <laughs> <laughs> so, we have some Swiss products or labels. Um, they're just some. They are a lot more than I will tell you after that, so... Of melting um, is something that we uh, they just knew in Switzerland. It's um, instant powder with milk 
and it starts with drinking the milk. But now there are some other products like cornflakes or cookies or stuff like that. It's like my little. Oh, yeah. <laughs>
sport and music events. The Swiss Open Start is a famous tennis tournament where also Roger Federer played some tennis. And there's the FMVD Sports Major Series Start Major. It's a beach tournament. It's one of the five biggest beach volleyball tournaments in the world. And the crowd is really awesome. You really, really have to go there when you are a Yes. When you come to visit Stadt, you have to visit the beach volleyball. And like for the other people that don't are into that aren't into like sports like tennis or beach volleyball, we have the polo golf club, like riding horses, playing polo. That's one of the biggest polo events in Switzerland. And if you are a musician or like classical music, then you can come to the Menwin Festival, a big festival to enjoy, enjoy um, great orchestras from around the world. All these events are during the summer. But in winter, it is even more attractive because we have a lot of snow and you can go skiing. Stark is more than 1000 meters over sea level. So it really snows in the winter, but there it's not special. But when you go to the ice, over 3000 meters over sea level, there's really snow and you can really go like in the snow. And Stadt is also famous for chalet style. It's like every house that's built has to be built in a chalet style. We're going to show you that later. Yes, that's like every house in Stadt looks kind of the same. It's like you can't buy your house like you want to. It's an exterior. It has to look like a chalet. And we'll show you a chalet afterwards. <coughs> Although Stadt is like very small, we have like a, a walking place, also, like, like a broad walk through Stadt, through the village, where you can go shopping, buy, buy some clothes, like what, whatever you want. It's like we have Dolce & Cabana, Louis Vuitton, Prada. <laughs> So it's like, we don't buy any clothes here. <laughs> so now we want to show you some pictures. Yes. Like that's the, like the logo of the Sunland. Um, those are the three hills from Sanda. It's like a, big, a bit history, but isn't that important? <laughs> <laughs> this is how a chalet looks like? Yes. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like that, that's what the chalet looks like. There's also the um, another school in there, that's the Rosé, it's a, like, a school that operates worldwide, like it's very known. Like a lot of famous people went there to school, it's a private school, obviously. That's the construction of the Monte Obelatan Amobi, it's a railway network. Which is now called the Golden Pass Line, improved accessibility at the beginning of the 20th century, and thus made a key contribution to the development of the tourism <coughs> Like here, it's like a, here are two pictures of Stadt itself, of the village. That's like there aren't any cars driving through it. So you can just enjoy your walk. Like this, as you see, there are a lot of old houses there, and in every house that is in the center of the village, there has to be a shop on the bus bar. <laughs> so people can enjoy walking through the shop. You see <laughs> 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 Thank you.
your shirt is right at home with the Thanks to its extra budget and gentle with the Gestalt Palace, a flagship among the Swiss future reporters, is considered a landmark of the region. Yes, exactly. That's the one Michael Jackson wanted to buy. But they declined because. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> you see? But the Gestalt also has its like. Um, smaller and more calmly places, more calm places, because there are some people that don't want to be with the rich people, that don't want to live in the village. They just stay their own and have their farming space, because we have a lot of farms in Shah. That's the famous church, it's very old, it's from the 17th century, and it's like one of the biggest around the Sun and London start area. That's uh, the country night, it's two days where the country musicians came to the start and play the music, and it's like you can really relax there and enjoy it. Yes, yeah, so a lot of young people go there too, like, because you can party there. And at first I thought it, it isn't that special, but when I talked to some people there and they told me, oh, we come every year to start for the country festival from Barcelona, uh, I noticed maybe it's bigger than I thought. So, Yeah. No, that's uh, like in, in, in 
for October. Yeah. yeah. September, October, when they come back from the Yes, exactly. You know, after the summer, it's just summer. like the famous all-point players, just like on the picture Mr. Vancouver um, um, gave to you world principle, it's like we are a traditional little Swiss village. With cheese. <laughs> a lot of cheese. <laughs> and I think that's a, like, nice little overview of Gstaad in the winter in the and in the evening and I hope some of you would like to come and visit Gstaad now yes. and here we are then. Today Switzerland is a democratic state separated into 26 different subunits called cantons but this hasn't always been the case, yet instead of annoying you with I'm sure very interesting facts or yes. the foundations of the history the history teachers. We're <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> looking forward to the presentation. We'd like to tell you the legend of William Tell, the national hero of Switzerland. <laughs> At the beginning of the 13th century, the Pass of Gotthard, a part of the Swiss Alps, which links the center of Switzerland with the south of Switzerland and Italy, was made accessible for trade issues. In this way, the center of Switzerland gave importance because whoever was in charge of Switzerland was also in charge of nearly the whole trade market in Europe. It didn't take long until the Habsburgs, the nobility of Austria, captured the canton of Uri. This one here. The canton in the very center of Switzerland. Soon after capturing Uri, the two other central cantons, Schwyz and Unterwalden, were taken by the Habsburg Reeds. So you can see this area, the yellow orange area, are these three cantons that were taken in by the Habsburgs. So um, many Swiss families didn't agree with the new form of government. So men from all three cantons came together to swear to God they'd be a united folk of brothers and they'd fight against the Habsburg until they were free again. <laughs> Among the opposition families, there was the family of William Tell. William Tell was a hunter. He was said to be the most skilled crossbow shooter ever. With his crossbow, he could shoot anything he took in sight. With his wife, <laughs> and his son Walter. <laughs> he lived in a place, in peace, in a little town called Burger, until the Reeds, Herman Gessler, took in the territory. Gessler was the worst of all Reeds. In his megalomania, he wanted to get all the respect and obeisance he could get from the Swiss people. To prove their loyalty, he set up a mast with his hat on top of it in the middle of the village square. Everyone who passed had to bow and greet the hat. Otherwise, they were punished. One day, Tell and his son made a visit to the village center <laughs> and didn't bow in front of the mask while passing. So, Tell was arrested and brought to Gessler. <laughs> when the Reed asked Tell why he had ignored the mask, Tell didn't give him an answer. Gessler was mad and ordered Tell to shoot an apple from the head of his own son. Don't 
Kessel begged for the life of his son, Kessler didn't show anything. And said, <laughs> if Tell didn't do as he was told, both of them would die. So, Tell shot. <laughs> They were number one. As I leave today, I will go back and report back. I have some pigs here and I have some sweets that I'm going to be showing off when I make my own presentation to say, I came, I met you, and I wish you well as you go today. Thank you so much. Thank you. 